Okay, so hello, welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be upgrading our project to use the newer versions of Dots. So we made one a while ago, we did some rotating and some spawning, but then since then there were some updates and I didn't want to do any more videos on Dots before those updates because they were gonna make some changes to the syntax and stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to upgrade our project to that now. I'm gonna upgrade the rotating and show you some of the new stuff. I'm not gonna do the spawning as well this video. I think it'll take too long. I want this to be a short upgrade kind of video and then now, this means we can get back to doing some dots videos, if that's what interests you guys, let me know down below. So we can, you know, start moving on to make maybe an actual simple game with dots, that'd be quite fun. Uh, I haven't done that yet, so I'm going to do some of that in my own time, so I can prepare for the videos. But yeah, it sounds fun, let's get into the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Beard or Die, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letta, Hades Zorko, Art Farrell, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter and Discord as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or creating a free account on our website, have a look around what we've got. It would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so I've made a new Unity project for this. It's actually going to be using the same repository that I've got over on GitHub. So if you guys have already looked at my dots one, we can reuse that. I'm going to make sure to use the same namespaces and everything. So it'll be very easy to go from one project to the other. And what I'm going to do is at the end of this video, once I've recorded it, I'm going to push this over the other project because the problem is I tried upgrading it just by updating packages and it didn't work. I had some problems. So I thought I'd just make a new package and we'll just try and replicate the same code. So we're going to basically remake the rotating system showing you how to do it with the updated the updated way and then um i can either do spawning off camera and then we can just jump into something new next time or you guys can have a go at it or i can just do it on my github it depends but for now what we're going to do is we're going to go to package manager and all i have is entities and hybrid renderer but keep in mind also the dependencies are installed so build burst properties maths all this stuff it's all installed so now when i go to entity debugger we've got this here but it's not running so you know it's not happening if we go over to our cube, uh, I just basically made a scene, scene rotating. Obviously, as I said, after the video, you can get access to all this. So I'm not going to need to explain everything I've set up, but I basically put a cube in. It's got a mesh filter and renderer to display in the screen. And then obviously right now it's a mono behavior. It's just a game object, but I've put a convert to entity script. So when we run, what it's going to do is it's going to destroy this cube and rebuild it as an entity in ECS. So if we just press play, what's going to happen is it's going to get destroyed from our scene. You'll see here, goodbye. And then down here, we've got our cube. So this is in ECS now. You can still use sub scenes like I showed previously, um, but I think it's a lot easier for people to just go add on a convert to entity script. I think sub scenes are more efficient if you have like a big area you want to just you know compact into an ECS scene, but this will do for now. We just want to rotate some cubes. So I can obviously duplicate this, move it around and we can show it working, but we need to actually make our rotate data again. So um, one new thing they've added is a attribute, an attribute that is called rotate not sorry not rotate that's our specific one it's called generate authoring component which means uh rather than having three scripts like we usually do the rotate component data and then we have the rotate authoring the authoring can be made automatically the problem is if it's made automatically you don't get to control what it does so for stuff that is just really simple uh like just some data like you know you want to set degrees per second and then it works as degrees per second you can do that and it saves you some code saves you writing an extra class the problem is if you need to do anything else, like for example, in our rotating um, example, I'll show you in a minute, we converted from degrees that we input to radians to work with. Um, the compute, like it doesn't know to do that, right? So we need to actually still make our own authoring component if we want to have control over that. So it's it depends on your use case. If you just want to have some value set in the inspector and that's the value it uses in ECS, then you can use this. So I'm gonna show you it. Um, so we're gonna make a script in rotating and we're going to call the script rotate. So this is going to be our component data. Okay, uh, reload it, I guess. And maybe go back to Unity because it's been weird. Okay, so we put this in the namespace. We used to have it as dots tutorial dot rotating. Okay. So we're going to go move our code into here. I'm going to actually get rid of this to give us some more room on the screen. Okay. So what we want is, we want this to definitely not be a mono behavior. It should be an I component data, like so. And then the way we used to have it is we'd pass in a public float radians per second, okay? And that's how it was. And then what we did, we made another class, a mono behavior that set this up, okay? Um, I'm gonna quickly just copy the code so we, get, so we can quickly see what it used to look like. This is the code for converting it. We'd take the rotate component, which I just deleted, um, we'd set the radians to be the math conversion from degrees to radians. 
Now, if we still want that, we have to make the script and do it ourselves. But if we don't need to do that, then we can add a tag. So in your guys' case, you might want to, for something else, uh, generate authoring component like so, right? I'll just show you this working now. So if we add that tag and let it compile, and then we go back over to our cube and we type rotate, um, obviously we've got this rotate script. Now normally you can't add that because it's not a mono behavior, but notice how it's called rotate offering and radians per second. Now, um, as I've said, this is if we want to input radians per second. But the thing is, you know, it's up to you. If you want to just put in radians yourselves, then sure, this is okay. If you want to do it as degrees, which most people still do, we'll have to make an offering component ourselves, which means we have to get rid of the automatic one. But this is how you do it automatically, okay? So that's one thing to note. Next, we're actually going to go make our uh, rotate offering script. So uh, rotate offering. Give it a second. And then I'm going to go copy paste because we already had it from last time. So I'll show you guys the code quickly, but obviously we've already had it in the past. Um, we essentially say, okay, add to the entity um, a rotate component and set the radians to be the conversion of degrees to radians. This actual mono behavior takes in degrees and then it does the conversion here. And then we have to make sure they've got a rotation thing on it if it doesn't already. If it does, it just doesn't do anything. You can't add components twice to, to an object. So it's essentially uh, add or just do nothing. Now we've made this, we go over to our cube remove the old rotate thing that broke because we've got rid of the component, the generate offering component. We just add rotate offering ourselves. And here we go, degrees per second. So obviously um, there's 360 degrees. So we could say, for example, um, 90. And then that means obviously every four seconds it'll do a full spin. Next, what we want to do is we want to actually build the system. So let's do that. So I've copied and pasted the code that we used to have for the rotate system. But as you see, there's some problems and that's because just the way they've changed things. So you used to have to make a job struct to use inside the job. You know, this is the job struct that you'd schedule. But the problem is, that's just not how it works anymore. If we've got a really simple job, I mean, it still exists, obviously. But if we've got a simple job like this, the way you do it now is you do it all inside the on update. You simply do a loop over entities and then you pass in your query, essentially. So we want stuff with um, rotation, yuli, x, y, z and the rotate component. And then it's a bit of a different syntax, but we do the same thing at the end of the day. We just change the value for the Euler and then we return the job. And it's, it's a little bit different. Also, burst compile is now by default. So rather than having to remember to put burst compile on your jobs that you want to burst, it's the other way around. So by default, they burst unless you add, and then, you know, it's not the same. It's not a tag that's just don't burst compile. You have to do it a bit differently and I'll show you that in a minute. But essentially, you have to turn off burst if you don't want it rather than turning it on if you do. Because it assumes that if you uh, have no problems, you should use it. Because it's obviously, it makes the most sense. Why, why would you not use it if you can? Okay. What we're going to do is we're actually going to um, just change this. So it's protected, override, job handle, on update, job handle, input depths. That's still fine. Um, but now what we want to do is we want to have the delta time. Um, but rather than how we do it here, well, first of all, actually, we need unity. I don't know why there's no... Uh, problems with this because we haven't got unity it's unity.core time data component i mean it's just different how we get time now i guess or how uh, it's done here okay anyway let's get the delta time so we're going to cache it here so float delta time equals time dot delta time okay so we cache the delta time we don't have to cache it but the thing is it's better because if we loop over 10 objects and they all want delta time rather than each one getting delta time we just give it to each one so it's less less checks on the time class okay and then we want to just return well not return anything yet let's just work through it one by one okay we've got the delta time and then next we have to make a job handle so we'll say uh job handle or we can even say var here var job handle equals entities dot for each we're gonna do a for each loop and then we have to pass in essentially the query or the condition so let's just uh, open this up we also need to schedule it in the end but let, let's just leave it like this for now okay so in here we have to it says it doesn't take zero arguments right so let's say we want a rotation euler thing here so ref rotation euler xyz let's just uh, copy this so i don't do it wrong i'm going to call this euler okay so this is the actual rotation thing normally you do you know in unity transform dot rotation dot x or whatatever but in this it's euler dot x or rotation euler x y z dot x okay and then we also want the rotate 
Now the thing is the rotate script is read only, whereas this one is read write. We're not actually changing anything on rotate, we're just reading the value from it. So rather than putting ref, we actually use the in keyword. So we say in rotate, rotate, okay? So now we've got this. And then we need to schedule it, by the way. So we're gonna say schedule. It's slightly different to how we used to do it, but it's uh, not really diff much different. And it also needs to take in um, the input depths for the job handle, like so, and now it's happy. Um, we also need to return this in the end because it wants back a job handle. So we need to return job handle, whoops. So it's a slightly different syntax to how it used to be, but now we put our logic inside here. So, I mean, to be honest, why not just copy paste it? There we go. So keep in mind, this is effectively a loop uh, here, okay? This is effectively a loop, it's a for each loop. So if we did time to delta time inside here, instead of just passing in delta time, it would have to, you know, essentially get this every single loop. But now we've got it once, and then we say, all right, here it is 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times, whatever, okay? Now that that's done, we can actually just completely get rid of this, and boom, we're done. That is the new way of writing that code, okay? Now, if you want to turn off burst, like I said, you could do earlier. I think it's uh, here you do it. So with, sorry, it's uh, entities dot um, without burst, there you go. So yeah, there is a with burst. I don't know why, because it's that's default. But just so you know, uh, if you want to turn off burst, you just say without burst, okay? But, uh, oh, I've put too many things there. Let's just fix this syntax. Okay, entities dot for each. There we go. I was just messing around with brackets a bit too much. Uh, yeah, here's the system. So every frame, we're gonna say, get the delta time, go for all the entities that have these two components. In is read only, ref is read and write. We're writing the Y value. So we're changing the Y value of the rotation. We're adding to it the radians per second times delta time, okay? And then we're scheduling it and returning at the end. Okay, so let's go back over oops, to Unity. We've made our system now. There is a problem somewhere, apparently. Uh, rotate system. Entities up for each uses managed icon per day of rotate. This is only spoiled. Uh, okay. So yeah, earlier on I was dumb. I uh, accidentally forgot when I made rotate. It's a struct. Uh, that's silly me. So now that it's the struct, we shouldn't have a problem with this. This error should go away. Just a slight problem, <laughs> I was just forgetful. Now that works, okay. Our cube's here. It's got rotate offering, 90 degrees a second. We press play. It gets converted. It starts rotating, 90 degrees a second. Over in the entity debugger, the cube, as you notice, has the rotation script. Uh, if we look down for the rotate here, it's up at the top, sorry. Our 90 degrees got converted into 1.57 radians, okay. Um, and then that's used by the system every frame. So we're doing this now. We're getting, I don't know how much FPS. That's, we're getting 450 FPS and that's on like without changing any of the settings. Obviously, so we were getting like four to 500 FPS without changing any settings. I still haven't changed that many settings. All I did was I changed the camera background to use solid color instead of Skybox. Because Skybox, uh, as you see, renders 1.7 thousand tries. So the Skybox has a lot to render. But if you just make it a solid color, it goes down to 14 tries, which increases the FPS a lot. And then obviously, uh, if we want, we can then take this cube, we can then duplicate it a bunch of times. Uh, oops, select them all, duplicate it a bunch of times, and then even just go a bit more, duplicate, duplicate. So now we've got quite a few. Now obviously you can push ECS very far, but I'm not gonna sit here and make thousands of thousands, it might make the editor lag. But as you see, we're still at 600 FPS with nearly a thousand. Uh, I can still go a bit further though. Let, let's up it. Now keep in mind, these are cubes. If we did this with, for example, you know, just squares like quads or sprites, it would be even better because um, 3D meshes take a lot more to render. Okay, I'm not going to go any further than this because it might start making my recording software lag or something. I don't know. Yeah, my FPS would be even higher if I wasn't recording a video and, you know, other background tasks going on. So this is 3000 at 440 FPS. So you can imagine if you kept increasing, you guys can push it as far as you want. But the point is we've got this rotating working now. Um, the code is pretty simple. Um, it's only a tiny bit more than if you were to do it in the mono behavior way. It's a little bit more. Um, but when you come on to making an actual game with ECS, you actually save more code in the long run. A lot of people think it's not worth doing ECS. It's too complicated. And I understand at the moment, it's kind of complicated to get set up compared to just normal game objects. But 
I feel like if you start building a proper game with it, which I'm going to plan on doing very soon if I find the time, it's going to save you a lot of code rewriting because you might have multiple scripts across your game that have little bits of code that are, you know, the same in loads of places. Maybe you have stuff that count down. Let's say you've got, um, you know, countdown to a fight starting or countdown till abilities ready. You have all these countdown things. Well, they all have the same code. You're going to write the same logic multiple times about checking, you know, every frame make this number go down and when it reaches zero, do this thing. Um, it'd be much better with ECS if you could write that code once. Yeah, it might take a little bit more code to get it ready, but then once you've done it, you never need to write it again. You can unit test it in one place and it's tested everywhere, you know, rather than testing multiple different times when you use it. It's, it's uh, yeah, it saves a lot of code reuse. Um, one doesn't save a lot of code reuse. It means you can reuse your code a lot more. Um, but yeah, expect more videos on ECS. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to, you know, push these changes to GitHub. You can get access if you want to. Have fun, you know, upgrading your stuff playing with vcs like i'm gonna play vcs um still plenty more to learn for me and i'm sure you guys are looking forward to that as well so leave video ideas down below thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching and goodbye